In this video I will show you how to use a micrometer and this micrometer, uh, these particular ones measure in inches with an accuracy of one ten thousandth of an inch. Okay, so we're going to be almost splitting hairs with these measurements but these measurements are important in a number of trades uh, and uh, in uh, engineering and uh, technology as well. So, let me just get rid of this here. Along the way we will measure a piston in the picture here uh, to be uh, we'll measure it this way and uh, this sorry we'll measure it this way and this way to see if it's out of round and we will also measure the outside diameter on this pin to uh, and then uh, what happens is that you take this measurement and you compare it to the specifications in uh, in your uh, service manual to see if indeed it's within manufacturing tolerances or within wear limit or it needs to be replaced. So, uh, first thing first, uh, parts of a micrometer. A micrometer has a, uh, let me just get rid of these letters here. Parts in the micrometer. This is an anvil on a micrometer, and this is a spindle because it spins as it, it, it rotates as it travels forward or backward, depending on your philosophical band. It's got a thumb lock there to uh, uh, lock your measurement uh, in because as the material to be measured gets clamped between the anvil and the spindle. Uh, the, you need to lock in your measurement so you can take a reading accurately and put it down flat and uh, take a reading. You can see some numbers there. Uh, one, uh, the handle here rotates and the numbers on it uh, obviously rotate with it. And uh, and as this one wrote, uh, and as the thimble here, this is called the thimble. As the thimble rotates, the spindle advances. Okay, that's how they work. And in the end here, you got a ratcheting mechanism. Listen to it. There. Uh, so uh, you can use this ratcheting mechanism to clamp your material that's being measured between the anvil and the spindle consistently to one, two, or three clicks. Okay, ten clicks is overkill, so don't do it. Uh, but uh, particularly softer materials, so you can just go one click or three clicks is plenty good, okay? That's what this uh, ratcheting mechanism at the end of the spindle is, uh, at the end of the thimble is for. And you've got uh, three scales on a caliper. And with the three scales, like I said, it measures to within 10,000th of an inch accuracy, and that's one, two, three, four decimal places, uh, but you have three numerical scales to generate uh, four decimal place values and it's tricky. I'm going to show you how. Just bear with me. It's a tricky shot. The uh, micrometer has a shiny body. It's got glare on it, but I will do my best to uh, uh, make a decent shot on it. Let's get started. I'm going to measure this uh, wrist pin on the piston here and it's being measured like so. You have to make sure that the outside diameter is measured on it accurately there and just remove the material the shortest possible way like so and put it down there and uh, let's get to the numbers here by zooming in that's about a good start there okay I'm gonna show you how this works let's go with this uh, fuchsia slash uh, whatever color the first number that you write down comes from the micrometer's body. Uh, it measures between 0 and 1 inch. So you put down a 0 because it's not possible to measure anything bigger than 1 inch on a, uh, on a micrometer. And uh, if you do, you probably jammed something in there and damaged the micrometer permanently. So, so don't. Okay. Next one is, this is your scale here for the tenth digit, okay? We're going to have four decimal digits generated. Let's get started with the tenth. 
as you spin the uh, as you spin the thimble on this micrometer, uh, the spindle here advances either this way or that way, and uh, as it does so, it covers over or exposes some of these numbers. The tenth digit is very simple. Which one of these numbers is the last that's being exposed by the rotating thimble? You just write down the sixth there. That's done for the tenth digit. Okay. Now the next one is going to be these two fellas here for the hundredth and the thousandth place value. And this is tricky. And this is why. The hundredth and thousandth place value could be zero, 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 one. 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, you get the idea, all the way up to 97, 98, 99. So there's a hundred possible combinations, including the 0, 0, up to 99. There's a hundred possible combinations for these two digits here. Now what we've got here on this thimble is you only have 25 numbers and 25 lines, but actually 50 lines, but 25 major lines and they are only numbered in multiples of 5 so you can see 15, 20, 25 but instead of 25 it's a 0 and from 0 they go 5, 10, 15, 20 and not 25, 0 again so you have 25. How does multiples of 25 work to create a hundred possible combinations? I'll show you how it's tricky we're gonna have to zoom into uh, yonder detail there and uh, let me do that and I'm going to explain this double quick let me just focus this camera thereabouts is good okay sorry about the shake and let's go uh, take a look at okay now some of my numbers covers the instruments numbers but here you see a main line here for four tenths of an inch and here you see a main line for five tenths of an inch. Between these two main lines we have some other subdivisions or yeah subdivisions is good. Here is the first one, here is the second little division, here is the third one and the fourth one I'm just gonna write it in there. The tenth has been divided into four equal parts. Okay, so this is a quarter of a tenth, a quarter of a tenth, a quarter of a tenth, and a quarter of a tenth. Now, how does this work with multiples of 25 on the rotating thimble to create a hundred different combinations? This is how. You got four amounts of 25,000 which equals exactly 100, okay, that's not exactly an equal sign, there, 4 times 25 equals 100, that's how the, these divisions help create 100 different combinations for the 10th and 100th place value, alright, let me demonstrate it right here, so you have the 0.6 written down here for the 6th Tenth. Now, what do we do after? Let me just get rid of that one. What do we do after this? Here is the first amount of 25. 25 what? 25 thousandth of an inch. As you spin the thimble, it starts when the edge of the, edge of the thimble is here, it, the, your measurement is 0 0.6. And as it starts rotating, it's 0 0.61, 62, 65, 10, 15, 20, 25. When it gets here, it's 6, 25. Okay? And then it keeps rotating. So here is the first amount of 25. And then, and then it doesn't have a 25 on it actually. You've got a 5, 10, 15, 20, 0. And again, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, but it doesn't have a 25, but it is a second multiple of 25,000 of an inch, and as you keep rotating it, 
it seems to me there's a third amount of 25,000 exposed, but I'm not going to write that one down because I think I saw something on the thimble that needs to be looked at carefully. Let me just reframe this way. Perfect. As you can see, this big 20. That's good. So 20, uh, I cannot write down a third amount of 25 because we haven't really passed a third set of 25. We passed about 20 or a little less than that. How much exactly? This line here, this whole horizontal line, starting from its zero here, that's a little bit outside of the shot, but not for long. There, this zero here, this is your main reference line, okay? Your main reference line. This is where the reading takes place for the hundredth and the thousandth place value. I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to look at this here and this here. If this one is 15 here, and this line here is 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay? That's a given. Because that one is the 20th line. Because this main reference line lines up with the 19th. I'm going to write down 19 here. And I have to add these numbers. 25 plus 25 plus 19. 25 plus 25 is 60. 79. It's 79 thousandth of an inch in total. One amount of 25,000, the second multiple of 25,000, and almost a third amount of 25,000, but indeed it is 19th thousand, and that's coming from the thimble. So 25 plus 25 plus 19 is 69. So I'm going to write 69 here. And here we have a little bit of misalignment there between those two lines, and that's good. I'm just going to exaggerate that misalignment by changing the measurement ever so, light, so slightly like that. Okay? So, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit and get rid of these numbers. Because you know that's the, that's the 19th thousand line, but that needs to be added to two amounts of 25,000. So in this case it's the 69th thousand line, plus a little more because I intentionally built in a little bit of misalignment there, and what do we do with it? Uh, that, that little bit of misalignment will generate a digit, a one digit from 0 to 9 to the 10,000th place value. If this main reference line indeed lines up with that one, then the 10,000th digit is zero. There is no more 10,000th digit. There is only tens, hundreds, and thousands. Okay? If the main reference line perfectly lines up with that one. But I just offset it so we can practice this. And uh, what needs to be done here is I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Like so, and uh, you can see that there is five numbers here to determine the ten thousandth uh, of an inch amount, but only five. Five numbers to come up with something from zero to nine, ten digits to generate with the use of five. How is that happening? I'll show you how. If this was nineteen and this was eighteen. This is 18.5, and if that was 19, this is 19.5. Okay, and then that's 20. Now, because these are not whole numbers, I'm going to get rid of the decimal dot there. If this was 18,000, that's 18,000 plus 5 ten thousandths, 19 thousandths, 19 thousandths plus 5 ten thousandths and twenty thousands or two hundreds if you like. You really got to know your place values and your uh, decimal digits with, uh, 
with this one because you don't get lost. So I do recommend that you have a solid uh, grasp on place value here. So if that was 19 and that one is uh, 19 thousandths plus 5 10 thousandths, otherwise 195 10 thousandths, then, uh, <coughs> then uh, any uh, misalignment here indicates that the thimble has been rotated some 10 thousandths past 19 thousandths. Okay, so that's what I did. I rotated it past, and we're gonna get uh, a digit for the last value there. And I'm just gonna grab it like so, and just wait for the camera to focus. Ah, uh, thereabouts is pretty good. But I put my needle here. Okay, the first 10,000th line lines up with any of the lines on the rotating spindle so in this case this one will be the ten thousandth digit uh, here uh, I'm gonna have to rotate it and look at them look at these lines squarely uh, minimizing parallax error uh, to make sure that uh, because it, this is a rounded surface I gotta look at it squarely I can't look at it from uh, sideways because it just wouldn't uh, make a proper reading so the second one is off in reference to that one, but kind of close, but it's off. The third one is even more off. The third 10,000th line there. So is the fourth one. And the fifth 10,000th line also doesn't line up with any of the numbers on the rotating thimble scale. And uh, so the five, four, three, and Two don't work uh, from this angle and this is parallax error from this angle it looks like that the five lines up with that hairline well when we rotate it you can and look at it squarely you can see that no they don't line up really well so I'm just gonna put it down flat and just go with the first uh, line on it that one that this first line lines up with the rotating symbol and therefore your 10,000th of an inch amount is going to be of one digit there. There's your final measurement, 6,691 10,000. Okay? Now, let's do another one on the piston. Let me just uh, zoom out and so you can see what I'm doing here. Just let's take the measurement in the direction of the wrist pin and something like that will work. Three clicks, lock it in, remove it carefully, put it down and read it. I'm just going to get rid of these markings and numbers so we have a fresh start and zoom in. And let's see what we've got here. There. That's a wonderful frame. There. Okay. Your first digit is a whole number that's coming from the micrometer's body, like I said. This one measures between 2 and 3 inches. Thus, your first number will be 2 point. Okay? It's not going to be a 3 point. If it is, you just damaged your micrometer if it measures between 2 or 3 inches. Next one, tenth of an inch. What do we have here exposed that, uh, that the uh, spinning uh, thimble exposed? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The 5 is clearly visible. Put that one down. Next one, we need two numbers generated for the hundredth and the thousandth place value. Let's count multiples of 25. One multiple of 25,000, two multiples of 25,000, and it looks like a third multi multiple of 25,000 has been clearly passed since we are past the zero, which is the same as 25. So I'm going to write down one more 25, and on top of it, how many 
more, how many uh, thousand more do we have? If this one is zero here, this is one, two, three, and that's four there. How many thousands do we have? One, two, three. Three for sure. Uh, this is the main reference line there, and you can see that the thimble clearly rotated past the third thousandth, which gets added, and it's a zero three. Okay, just in case you, just in case the thimble is, the edge of the thimble is there, and you have the same alignment. Don't just write down the three, please, because if you do, you write down the three here. Incorrect. Write down zero three because that's uh, because you need a zero for the hundredth uh, place value as well. Okay, so do write down zero three, please and thank you. Twenty five, twenty five, and twenty five. That's seventy five, seventy six, seventy uh, seven, seventy eight for the total of the thousand plus a little extra there. So I'm going to write down. 78. Oh, and by the way, you should write down the, uh, the total first and then erase the numbers to be added. But that's just, uh, that's just a good habit. Okay? So we have 78,000 plus a little more because the main reference line and the uh, third thousand indicator. Uh, have clearly been rotated past each other. So we're going to need a 10,000th amount and for that I need to lift the micrometer, the micrometer's body up and rotate it a little bit and maybe zoom out to see which one of the 10,000th lines here line up with any of the hair lines, any of the hair lines on the spinning thimble. So, I'm just going to put it on my hand and uh, focus, the, focus the ammo device here. How about the first one? The first one is off. It kind of looks close, but it's off. Let's look at the second one. Just wait for it to focus. There, that's a little better. There, the second line is... Uh, kind of close but it's also misaligned there it doesn't line up perfectly with any of the lines on the thimble scale now the third one let's see how the third one is looking yeah the third one is looking pretty good there if I look at it close uh, if I look at it squarely like that without a parallax error the third one does line up with this, this third uh, 10,000 indicator line does line up with one of the hair lines on the main scale. So the last digit is going to be 3 for the 10,000th place value. But just to double check it, rotate the uh, micrometer further and look at the fourth 10,000 line and it is not lining up with anything. The same story can be said about the fifth one. It's also out. So the third one, yeah, there, the third one looks best. Now this is called parallax error when I put it down flat and due to the roundness of the uh, sleeve there uh, now from this angle the third line it seems to be out of alignment but again this is called parallax error that's why you pick it up and you rotate it and you look at it squarely so your last digit is a 3 there there's your measurement 2.5783 inches or 5,783, 10,000. So that was one direction. Let me zoom out and double quick take the last measurement. So this was the direction of the first one. We're going to go across it, unlock it, because I don't want to force it and damage it. And three clicks, lock it, take out the piece, put it down, and uh, I'm just going to unlock it and change it ever so slightly just for educational purposes nothing else there I just changed it a little bit let's zoom in and even more and 
there about. Let me see the frame on the camera. Jolly good. Let's get started with this uh, pinky fuchsia, whatever color. Okay, so we have a two point because that's a given. Okay, two whole inches and then some. One, two, three, four, five. There's your five tenth amount. Now we need to generate an amount with addition for the hundredth and thousandth place value. Twenty-five. I'm gonna write it here. Twenty-five. One more twenty-five. A third multiple of twenty-five thousandth, and then some more. Again, this is your main reference line there. So you have three amounts of 25 plus. Here is a 5 that's clearly being passed. So if that one is 5, this is 6, 7, and 8. And uh, I'm just going to get rid of those ones. And you keep your eye on this reference line here. If this one is 6, this is 6.5. If that one is 7, this is 7.5. But again, uh, these are not whole numbers, these are already thousands and ten thousands. If this one is six thousands, this one is six thousands and five ten thousands, seven thousands, seven thousands and five ten thousands, eight thousands. Okay? If that one is five ten thousands, uh, that five and this misalignment here is going to generate a digit between 5 and 9 for the 10,000th place value. But before we work with that 5 at the end, make sure you do record the 7. And I'm just going to get rid of everything else. Because we are going to work with the 7, and it's a 0, 7, okay? So 25, 50, 75, plus 7, looks like. 80, let's see, uh, where was I, 75, 82, okay, now, 82,000, uh, so I'm going to get rid of these ones, and that one as well, and uh, that 5,000 is going to be uh, added to another number that's coming off of the 10,000 digit scale. So for that, I'm going to lift it up again and uh, rotate it slightly and uh, to see which one of these 10,000 lines line up with any of the lines on the thimble. The first one is off. The second, if I look at it closely, not closely, squarely, the second Yes, the second has a perfect alignment there. The second 10,000th line lines up with that one. And if I rotate it forward a little more, I can verify that the third one indeed, the third 10,000th line is indeed out. So is the fourth and the fifth. Uh, so if I put it back thereabouts, what do we do with the third line that we just read off? the uh, 10,000 scale that gets added to that 5 and your 10,000th of an inch amount is 8 ten thousandths. So you write the 8 there for the 10,000th amount. Now you can do a subtraction of the two amounts and uh, I'm just going to do it on a calculator for no particular reason. 2.5828 minus 2.5828 five seven eight three equals zero point zero zero okay I'm gonna write it nicely zero point zero zero four five forty five ten thousandth of an inch this piston is out of around forty five ten thousandth of an inch all right eh? so this number you again take to the service manual to see if it's within the manufacturing tolerances and to determine whether or not the piston needs to be replaced. That's how you use uh, calipers and that's how you read the uh, fractions of an inch in decimal. Get out there and practice it, there's no other way.